Hello, and welcome to Rural Delivery. Today we learn about the impact of dung beetles in a pastoral farming enterprise that was implemented and closely followed over several years by research scientist Sean Forgey. We meet John Pearce, host of the dung beetle study, and a whole lot more besides, at Shelley Beach Farms on the Kuiper Harbour. Then we learn about the business of Hillfoot Farm, providing duck eggs for markets, restaurants and bakeries. At any one time, around 700 hectares of New Zealand's pastoral land is covered with dung. This reduces the amount of available forage and increases opportunities for reinfection of animals by parasites present in the dung. It also increases the chances of polluting waterways. But an industrious insect may be the answer to these problems. Sean Forgey explains. Several years ago, uh, an end user group was created with the whole idea of bringing in a whole series of exotic pastoral dung beetles with the idea of actually trying to do something in terms of creating an equilibrium on the pastoral environment with recycling of dung from livestock animals. We do have a few actual beetles here. There were two small little beetles that came from Australian livestock back in the 1870s and they're a small dung bearing beetle. Uh, and we also have one that we deliberately introduced back in the 60s which is called a Mexican dung beetle. While it's good at removing dung and you can get quite abundant numbers around February time, it doesn't produce many young. So of all of the dung beetles, this one produces the fewer amount of eggs, therefore doesn't remove as much dung as you'd want. And it's only present for a certain time of the year. So, so far we've had uh, governmental permission in the country to import up to 11 different types of pastoral dung beetle from areas around the world that have similar climates and similar pastures to New Zealand. We have four species that have gone through disease testing and now at a stage where we can release those out onto the pastures. This is a typical looking dung beetle. Most of them are characterised by having a shovel shaped head and these digging front appendages. The specimens you've got here represent the majority of the beetles that we have permission to bring into New Zealand, into our livestock pastures. You can see there's an array of different sizes and shapes, from very small to very large. All of these bury dung beneath the soil surface, and what they do with it beneath the soil surface is typically lay an egg into a, what we call a brood ball. This is a brood ball of sausage that's made by one of the larger beetles, and that's buried somewhere up to about 45 centimetres beneath the soil surface. Um, that's variable depending on the types of soil compaction and soil you've got, but typically quite a deep barrier and the female will stack one on top of the other as she goes up the tunnel that she's provisioned with brood balls. Each one will have an egg in it. I guess it's the process from that, which is what we get the benefits from. Inside here are some of the big blue beetles that we've got currently being mass reared for sale onto pastures. So this is called Geotrippi's spinager. And if you turn it over, it's got a, a lovely sheen to its underside and so we've affectionately called it the power beetle because of the iridescence, the blue iridescence that it's got on the underside. These beetles originate from central and southern Europe from very similar climates to what we have here in New Zealand and these actual specimens themselves, well the founders for this population came from Tasmania and in Australia as part of the Australian dung beetle project so we imported from there. These guys are adapted to the dung of livestock animals such as cattle and horses, uh, basically animals that produce large volumes of dung. A pair of these beetles, when they're into the full nest building mode, could get rid of uh, uh, two litres of dung in probably around 48 hours. This beetle here, we know, will be suitable for most of New Zealand's climate. It particularly likes hard, compacted, moist clays but we know from our own experience and research that they'll go into a variety of different types of soil types, so they're quite adaptable to an array of soils. These guys here live anywhere from six months to a year as an adult, typically making an appearance around Christmas time, and then they'll keep going full steam ahead, removing dung off your pastures till probably um, the onset of winter in the south and in the milder conditions up here in the, in the, in the North Island, uh, you'll expect to see them probably year round. Sean came here as a student and had a hundred beetles and wanted a nice safe place for them and so we gave him permission to leave them and we've watched them for well 16, 17 years now and about year nine they suddenly proliferated and now we have reports that they're 15 kilometres away from where they started. We don't have dung anymore. 
when we make hay or silage, we're not baling it anymore. It's um, all broken down, it just disappeared. I mean, within two or three days, they've gone. We introduced a couple of varieties of worms that were very effective, but once the beetles came on the scene, they just hoed it down. There's just no comparison between worm activity and beetle activity. All around me, the conventional farms of 15 kilometres are actually seeing the dung disappear and their, health, their stock not needing to be drenched, maybe once at weaning, and that's about it on year three. Year five, they don't need to. You don't see highs and lows in the pastures because um, both the urine and the dung are actually being sequestered and activated biologically and made available to the plants. To obtain the beetles themselves, there are a number of different packages available depending on the type of lifestyle farming or commercial farming you're doing. There are some basic prerequisites that you would set up prior to receiving the beetles, and that would effectively to choose a paddock, preferably central in your farm itself. You would pre-stock it with some livestock to make sure that there's some fresh manure in the area, probably within 24 hours of, of putting the beetles out. Uh, and subsequent to that, once you've put the beetles actually into several cow pats in that area, you want to create uh, an environment in which there's always dung within the vicinity for the first couple of few weeks after the beetles have been put in there because naturally they'll want to move around. But they'll only go where the fresh dung is. So if you have to rotate your stock to the next paddock, do it in such a way that enables the beetles to be able to move where that fresh dung moves if they need to. Farmers, when they're seeding their farms with dung beetles, just have to be mindful that there are several drench families out there that have chemical ingredients in them that have a negative impact on things feeding on the dung. There's a lot of information out there on the web at the moment that you can quickly refer to to see what active ingredients are in the drenches you're using. And there are some products out there that are available that actually have been tested as dung beetle friendly. There's a number of studies that have been conducted overseas and in New Zealand that all point to positive impacts on dung beetles burying dung containing the nematodes. And most of that is showing significant reductions in the survivorship off the eggs or the infective larvae, and also their infective um, rates in the stock once they're feeding over the top again.